Hey everyone, my name is Wes, this is Interactive English, and if this is your first time here on the channel, this we're, we're all about just helping you practice and improve your English skills. And again, please, if this is your first time, write your name, tell me where you're from, write that in the chat, or even if you're watching this later, write that in the comments. I love hearing from uh, everyone, well, especially new people. So. What, uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about some, some current events. And I think it's a very serious uh, topic, it's a very important topic, and I, I just want to start out by saying that uh, we're gonna be talking about what's going on in the United States with the, the protest and Black Lives Matter and uh, George, George Floyd, and I, I just want to start out by saying that obviously I don't I don't consider myself as a person that can speak intelligibly on this issue. I am from the United States, but I say that I cannot speak intelligibly on this issue because I don't have the same experience. So I don't have the experience of what it's like to be somebody who is black in the United States. I don't have the experience of what it is like to be a, a minority in the United States. So the only thing that I feel like I can do is try to uh, try to listen, try to understand, try to read more about what's happening and what's going on, and then just try to reflect about my, I, I mean, my own experience and who I am in order for, well, in order for me to try and become a, a better person. So I'm not, this is not about, this is not my expertise. So it's, this lesson is not about me giving you my opinion about everything. I am an English teacher. So this is an English lesson. And what we're going to do is instead of me just talking about my opinions or thoughts, we're going to look at a few different uh, news articles. And we're gonna read the articles, which I hope will help you maybe give a little bit of a better understanding about the situation and, and learn more about well, what's happening, why it's happening. Um, and then again, just try and hopefully when you leave, think about, okay, well, where do we go from here? Well, what might be the direction that we need to go in um, after this? So. As we go through these articles, because like I said, it's an English lesson, we're gonna, I'm going to pick out some vocabulary words and I'm going to create a vocabulary list and I will put those words in the description after the lesson is over. So in case you wanna look at the words and review, but I'm, going, I'm trying to choose words that I think are relevant, that are important. These are vocabulary words so that if you want to continue reading about these events that are happening, or maybe you're watching the news or you're listening to something that if you understand these words, it's going to help you better comprehend the information and, and understand what's going on. So again, it's more about reading and building your vocabulary as well as learning about this situation because some of you have asked me about um, what's happening, what's going on, why it's happening. So just keep that in mind. We're going to be looking at vocabulary words and at the same time, I hope that these articles will, will help put the situation in, into context so that you understand and get a better idea as to what's happening. So right here, we have our vocabulary list, which I will be bouncing back and forth between. I apologize if uh, I have so many windows open right now, so I'm going to try and do this. Hopefully it's... Um, it's a little seamless, but let's go ahead and begin. Um, and we're gonna start with this site right here. And what this is, it's talking about, well, the title is, what is Black Lives Matter? To help you understand, well, what this is, because this is uh, something that you probably have been hearing more about if you've been paying attention to the protest, if you've been reading about it, you may be wondering, well, what exactly is Black Lives Matter? And this article tells you what it is and kind of how how it began. So let's go ahead and read this together and then I'll go back and pick out a few vocabulary words. So it says, attention has been called to the Black Lives Matter movement by Blackout Tuesday, in which the music and other industries in the United States this week protested the death of George Floyd 
and other African Americans by shutting down for eight minutes and 46 seconds. The length of time Floyd was held to the ground with a policeman's knee on his neck. This statement against racial injustice has largely been associated with the Black Lives Matter movement, which began in July 2013 when George Zimmerman was acquitted of fatally shooting Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old unarmed black teenager. Martin, has, uh, Martin was killed by Zimmerman uh, as he was walking from a convenience store to his father's home in Sanford, Florida, where he was visiting. Zimmerman, a self-proclaimed neighborhood watchman, called the local police department, mentioned there had been burglar, burglaries in the neighborhood, and said he observed a real suspicious guy who was up to no good. The police dispatcher told Zimmerman his security services were not needed, but Zimmerman still left his vehicle, leading to a violent confrontation between himself and Martin. Zimmerman fatally shot Martin at close range and later claimed to, to police Martin assaulted him and he shot Martin in self-defense, the basis of his acquittal. So this is the situation um, which happened uh, back in 2013 that started this movement called Black Lives Matter. So I'm going to go back and we're going to pick out some vocabulary and we're going to talk about this a uh, little more. So if you're sitting there again, if you're wondering, thinking about specifically, well, what is Black Lives Matter? What it really is, is it's it's more of, I think, from my understanding, more of a movement than a, just a, a singular organization, because I think there are many people involved in it. So this is the meaning, this is the definition that um, it came from Wikipedia, but I think it also... Um, was on their website as well. So I'm going to post it in here, right here. So Black Lives Matter is an international human rights organization movement originating in the African-American community that campaigns against violence and systematic racism towards black people. So what's happening now, obviously the situation with George Floyd involved the police. Black Lives Matter, it's it's not really, it's not just about the police and the black, and the black community. It's, it's much broader because as you just read, this situation uh, in which this man, Zimmerman, shot this other uh, young man, Trayvon Martin, it, it was not related to the police in that matter. Um, but it came, it, it did come out of the justice system, which we're going to get to some of those words right now. So some other words that I want to highlight uh, in this article um, are as follows. Let me go back to the article. So you know what Black Lives Matter means. This this man, George Zimmerman, um, right here, was talking about, he was acquitted of fatally shooting Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old unarmed black teenager. If somebody is acquitted, that is more talking about the law in legal terms. So acquitted Acquitted and fatally are the next two words that um, I want to put up there on a vocabulary list. So if somebody is acquitted, it means that it was decided in a law of court that someone is not guilty of a crime. And he was acquitted of fatally shooting Trayvon Martin. So if we're talking about something fatally as an adverb, it means in a way that causes death. So often you might hear it as an adjective and you say something is fatal and it means that the something somebody died because of this thing. So think about that situation because it, it is, it's crazy. That here was a man that confronted this other, you know, 17 year old boy, um, 17 year old teenager, and he wasn't committing a crime he was being basically accused by this other guy. The confrontation started. He shot him and killed him. And he said it was self-defense. And he said, well, I was just defending myself. When they brought it to the, through the justice system and the jury had to decide whether he was innocent or guilty, they came back and they said he was not guilty. He was acquitted of basically killing this, this teenager. Um, and that caused, uh, and rightfully so, a lot of outrage and a lot of anger. And that's how the movement 
uh, got started. So let's go back to the, the website. There's a few other words that I wanted to highlight. Uh, so it said, again, the situation, Martin was walking. Uh, he was killed when walking from a convenience store to his father's home. And Zimmerman was a self-proclaimed neighborhood watchman. So if you're unsure about what some of this means in the United States, and I don't know how it works in some other countries, some neighborhoods, some areas, they, they may have something called a neighborhood watch. And all that means is that if there, let me go back to the vocabulary list um, right here. If there is a neighborhood watch, you may see some signs up about it. It's supposedly when you, your neighborhood, the people that are your neighbors, are going to watch the other homes or the neighborhood if something bad or wrong is happening as a way of reducing crime. Um, and it's organizing people to watch each other's property. And sometimes you might see a sign up. I don't know if you see them anymore. Uh, when I was a child, it might say sometime like a sign that says neighborhood watch. And it kind of is just like a warning to people like, okay, be careful. Like we're watching, we're, we're trying to help each other and watch it. So. It said he was a self-proclaimed neighborhood watch. And what that means if somebody is self-proclaimed, it means that you say something about yourself. That this was not his official job. This was not something that he was, I don't believe he was paid to do. That this was his job, that somebody hired him to do this thing. That he did it himself and he say, he would say this about himself. He was a self-proclaimed neighborhood watch person. So it's used as a, an adjective to say that somebody is a self-proclaimed teacher. Maybe that's not their job, but they say that about themselves. Or they are a self-proclaimed, um, you could choose anything really. And really it's not an official title, it's just something you say about yourself if you say that something is self-proclaimed. So in this situation, Zimmerman was a self-proclaimed watchman um, and he described, he called the police and described this person as a real suspicious guy who was up to no good. If you don't know what that phrase means, that somebody is up to no good, I'll, I'll add that one back to the vocabulary list right now. So if you say somebody is up to no good, it's kind of just a, a phrase, an expression that means somebody is doing something illegal or just some bad activity. And you'd say that this person is up to no good. Um, and then the last word that I wanted to talk about was at the very end of the article right here. So it said that Martin Zimmerman fatally shot Martin at close range and later claimed to the police uh, that Martin assaulted him. He said that this this teenager, this uh, Trayvon Martin, assaulted and came after him and he shot him in self-defense, which means that he was saying self-defense, he was trying to defend himself and that was the basis of his acquittal. And if you say that something is the basis of something else, you know that acquittal means that you were found not guilty. And if that self-defense was the basis of his acquittal, what that means is, um, let me add it, it means that that was the most, that that was the reason for this thing, that that was the most important fact or reason for doing something. So self, you could say that self-defense was the basis of uh, his acquittal. And as I said, like, hopefully this article will give you some context of, okay, well, what is Black Lives Matter? It is a movement. Where did it begin? It, it started with this, um, with this instance, in which case, again, when he was acquitted, uh, everyone was outraged and rightfully so, because it's basic, like, like he, Zimmerman, this guy started this fight and then he, when the fight escalated, because again, if you start a fight with somebody, somebody may fight back. And he shot him, and then basically the the judge, the criminal, um, the criminal justice system acquitted him and said, "Oh no, no, you're not guilty of killing this person," um, which was ridiculous. So hopefully, this will give you a little historical context of um, what's going on. So again, I just want to say, like. Um, 
I'm not really going to spend much time reading the, the comments as we go through this. Um, I, I, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the U.S. protests, the Black Lives Matter movement, and trying to give you a little historical uh, context, explain the situation, and provide you with some vocabulary to help you understand it better if you continue reading about it or listening to it. But I will say, hopefully, I, I haven't been reading the chat, but I hope everybody, uh, all I'd ask is just be respectful, be kind. Uh, you know, this is not a place to try and um, an antagonize others or other people. So uh, I hope that people are just being respectful in the comments. So this is another article that I wanted to show you that I think will also help things put, put them into context a little more. So the title of this article is called uh, Which Death do, do They Choose? Many black men fear wearing a mask more than the coronavirus. And I think this shows you uh, a little bit of everything about what's going on right now with the virus and um, what's happening with the Black Lives Matter. And in this, in this uh, well, let's just read the article. So it's saying, what do they choose? Wear the mask or, or the coronavirus? So uh, again, I'll read it and then we'll pick out a few words and go through it to, to help you build your vocabulary uh, a little bit. So it says, when the CDC issued guidelines in early March, Asking people to wear masks to prevent the spread of coronavirus, the question for many black men was not where to get a mask or, or which kind, it was how do I cover my face and not get shot? As the recent killing of George Floyd made achingly clear, the widespread fear of violent death at the hands of law enforcement is not unfounded. Being killed by police is one of the leading causes of death for young black men. A study last year found one in a thousand black men in America could expect to be killed by police. Despite their fears of infection and the statistics and statistics showing black communities are among the hardest hit, many black men feel wearing a mask is a bigger threat than the coronavirus. Just as they are more likely to than white people uh, to to be stopped and frisked to be pulled over for traffic violations and to be charged with drug crimes, black individuals also appear more likely to be targeted by police for simply wearing masks. In a heartbreaking calculus, many are choosing not to wear them at all. So again, the, the title of the article kinds of sums it up that, you, the, that uh, black men have a dilemma about um, do I wear a mask and risk being targeted by the police, or do I not wear a mask and get the coronavirus? So let's look at a few of the vocabulary words that I wanted to talk about in this article. So the first one is it said, again, the, the death, the killing of George Floyd made it achingly clear. Um, it made it achingly clear the widespread fear a violent death at the hand of law enforcement is not unfounded. So let's look at a couple words. I want to look at achingly and unfounded. So if you say that something is achingly clear, then you're talking about it's an adverb and you're describing this um, situation. Let me go back over to our vocabulary list. Um, achingly means similar to extremely, but it means extremely in a bad way. Because if you have an ache, which is a noun, it's something like a pain that hurts. So achingly as an adverb, it means it's achingly clear. It means it's extremely clear in a bad way. Another adverb that um, you could use that has a similar meaning would be painfully. If you say painfully or achingly, they have uh, similar meanings. Now, if you say that something is unfounded, all right, it means that it is not based on facts. So let's go back to the article because this was uh, important the way that it was worded. If something, uh, let me go down so you can see that. So achingly, extremely bad and like painfully, unfounded that something is not based on facts. But if you go back to the article, whoops, and read how it's used, it says that, um, the fear of violent death at the hand of law enforcement is not unfounded. So the, it's, it's used in a way saying that this is based on facts, that there is a, a fear of um, 
uh, of maybe having uh, resulting in death at the hands of law enforcement that is based on facts. And the killing of George Floyd by a police officer was just another example of that. So again, if they're, in this case, they're saying it's not unfounded, which is, which is a way of saying it is based on facts. But if you say that something in general is unfounded, then you're saying it's not based on facts. Like the accusations were unfounded, that they weren't based on facts. Uh, the, next, um, the next few words that I wanna talk about are in this next paragraph that it's talking about difference between um, like black men and white, or black people, white people, uh, right here. Let me make sure you guys are, we're watching it, we're looking at the same thing. Um, yes. So it says, just as they are more likely than white people to be stopped and frisked, to be pulled over for traffic violations and charged with drug crimes, black individuals also appear more likely to be targeted by police simply for wearing masks. So let's look at that stop and frisk. If you're not sure, well, what does that word mean um, if somebody is frisked? Um, frisked. So Let's go back to our vocabulary list um, right here. And if you say that somebody is frisked, it means that you are, the police is stopping you. And then what they're doing is they are searching your body. They are searching your body to see if you have anything that is illegal or some weapons, maybe drugs. So if the police see somebody and they think, oh, this person, they're suspicious, they're up to no good, they can just stop that person and say, okay, turn around. I'm going to, I'm going to check your, I'm going to see if you have anything illegal on you. Maybe you're not doing anything wrong. And again, this was something stop and frisk that, um, black people are more likely to be stopped and frisk than white people. Even though in the United States, the, the population is very different. There are many more white people, um, than there are black. So the next word that I had was talking about, I want to talk about targeted because it said that um, if somebody is targeted, it means that they are paying direct attention to a particular group. So let's go back and show you how it was used in the article. It said that um, it's talking about the likelihood and they also, black people also appear to more likely to be targeted by police for simply wearing masks, that the police would see somebody, the, a black person wearing a mask, they're more likely to be targeted, that the police are paying more attention to this person. And then the last word that I want to talk to you was, therefore, because of that, they said they make a heartbreaking calculus. Many are choosing not to wear mask at all. They think that the mask put them more at risk. So if you're saying that somebody is making a calculus, it's similar to somebody like making a calculation and they're trying to make a decision. So we can go back to the vocabulary list and um, add this word, where is it? Right here, sorry, let me move this down. So a calculus is, again, I took all these definitions from the Cambridge Online Dictionary. It's one that I prefer to use. It's a method of reasoning to make a decision. So in this case, the, even though Everybody is encouraged to wear a mask. Uh, these people, they feel, these young black men feel that they are in more danger if they wear the mask than if they don't. So again, that, hopefully that gives you a little sense of the, the fear that people have that they're living with um, in their daily lives, especially at a time like now during this pandemic when everybody uh, is saying like, yes, you should wear a mask. And one of the examples they gave in the article, it, I'm gonna also link all of these articles down below if you wanna go back and read the full article. I've only, I'm only taking the very beginning of these articles and talking a little bit about it. Um, but this one right here, if you were to go to this, um, where was it? There was a link in here. I don't know if it's this one right here, um, but there was a link um, to one of these that showed an instance of the situation was two uh, young black uh, men walked into uh, a Walmart. They were gonna buy a few things. 
And they said the security guard there started following them as they were walking in to this Walmart. And as they go inside, the guard tells them that they have to leave. And I think the, the reason he told them is that they will look suspicious because they were wearing masks. And the masks that they were wearing were, you can see a video because he's videotaping and showing it. It's just the one that you would get uh, from your doctor that you would buy at a convenience store, all of the one, many of the ones that you would see in the hospital. So it wasn't any kind of strange mask. There's a pandemic going on. But again, it's just another example of the type of discrimination that goes on. The, the next uh, site that I want to look at is this one right here, which is more specific about uh, the death of George Floyd, which recently happened, and the protests that have since followed. So let's go over here. It says, I'm just going to read the beginning part. It says, tens of thousands of people have demonstrated mainly peacefully across the United States for an eighth night following the death of African-American George Floyd in police custody. One of the biggest protests joined by Floyd's relatives took place in his hometown of Houston, Texas. Many defied curfews in several cities imposed after violence and looting in some districts on Monday night. The Pope has issued a call for racism not to be ignored. We cannot tolerate or turn a blind eye to racism, he said, but he also condemned the violence. Nothing is gained by violence and so much is lost. So let's talk about some of the, um, the words that you see in this part right here. So I want to highlight a few of them for you. And let me, gosh, why? Hold on one second. I apologize. Um, okay. So let's go over here to the vocabulary, our vocabulary document right here. I'm going to move this out. And some of the words that I want to highlight from this argue, the first meant to would be curfew and looting. And I'm going to go ahead and put both of them right down here. So if you're talking about a curfew, this is something that uh, because of some of the, the riots that have transpired, especially it tends to happen later at night, at nighttime, the city may impose a curfew. And what that means is that is a rule that everyone must stay at home between particular times. So they may say there is a 8 p.m. curfew. And at that time, everybody must be in their home. Now, it's used in this context. You could also use this uh, word in other contexts as well. For example, when I was younger and I was a teenager and I tell my parents like, oh, I want to I'm going to go out. It's Friday night. And they may say, OK, your curfew is 11 o'clock that at this time I had to be home. It was a curfew. Um, it talked about looting in the article, and I'll go back and highlight some of these. And that is just an activity of stealing from shops during some event or protest and people start looting. They break into shops and they may go inside and steal stuff. And that's what the, that is called is looting. So if we go back to the article and see how they use those words in context, um, it's talked about that during these protests, many defied the curfews that they did not they did not follow the rules. They did not go home. Um, and they, they, the reason they put these curfews in is that they were imposed, which means they were started after violence and looting in some of the areas. So the next phrase that I want to talk to you is the, the Pope issued a call for racism not to be ignored. He said, we cannot tolerate or turn a blind eye um, to racism. So that, this is the phrase that I wanted to t talk to you about was to turn a blind eye to something. So if you say that somebody um, turns a blind eye to something, what that means is that uh, somebody is ignoring or they're just, they pretend not to notice something. So this is a phrase that you may hear. Um, it, I don't want to say it's... Uh, quite common, but you could hear it in a variety of contexts. If somebody is ignoring something or they're not paying attention, especially to something that's wrong, um, that they should pay attention to, you could say that, that somebody is turning a blind eye to this thing. Um, the next phrase that uh, I wanted to talk to you about, okay, let's just go back to the article quickly and I'll show you a few more words 
that I wanted to go. So I, actually, I wanted to read the next part too, because I did have some words that I wanted to show you in that. So the Pope made those comments about we cannot turn a blind eye. And right down here, it says, the Floyd case has reignited deep-seated anger over police killings of black Africans and racism. Demonstrators have taken to the streets not only to express their outrage at the treatment of Mr. Floyd, but to condemn police brutality against black Americans more widely. There have been calls and a proposal from a U.S. lawmaker to end the qualified immunity of police, which prevents civil legal action against them. More generally, um, more generally, protesters have called for an end to racism and discrimination. So I want to go highlight a few of these words. So it said the Floyd case, when, when, when he died, it said it is reignited deep-seated anger um, over police killing of black Americans and ra racism. So I want to talk to you about reignited, to reignite something, as well as something that's deep-seated, which is an adjective. So let's go back over to the list. Um, and let me add those words uh, to this. So, uh, okay. So if you say that something reignites, it means that it started again. So as I mentioned, and I, I showed you in that first article about how Black Lives Matter, um, how the, the Black Lives Matter movement began, and there have been other instances and problems that have followed. And then when this happened, the death of George Floyd, it reignited um, all of this again. It started again. It reignited that deep-seated anger. And if something is deep-seated, it means that you feel you feel really strongly about something or you really truly believe something. So in this case, they are talking about strong anger, deep-seated anger. Um, the next couple of words that I wanted to talk to you about was the end there to help you understand this part right here, where it's talking about a, a proposal, which is like a suggestion from a US lawmaker. They want to end the qualified immunity of police, which prevents um, civil legal action against them. So I wanna to talk to you about, they want to end the qualified immunity is a word that I wanna talk to you about. They wanna stop the immunity of police which would prevent this um, civil action. Um, one other word that I want to talk to you uh, about was this, um, this part right here. Sorry, I missed a word. That demonstrators have taken to the streets not only to express their outrage at the treatment of Mr. Floyd, but to condemn police brutality against black um, Africans, uh, black Americans uh, more widely. So they're talking about condemning police brutality. Um, and in the next part, the suggestion was to end immunity for the police. So if we go back to our vocabulary list, if we're talking about um, condemning something, to condemn means to criticize someone or something because they've done something morally wrong. So uh, a lot of people are condemning uh, these actions that, hey, this is wrong, it's morally wrong, to condemn. Immunity has a couple of different meanings, which you may have heard for because of the pandemic as well. Immunity means that you are protected against disease or legal action. So if you have immunity in talking about the, the disease, the virus, COVID, then it means that you're protected against the disease. If you have immunity in the legal sense, it means that you are protected and you do not have to worry about somebody suing you. And in this case, qualified immunity for police officers when they're talking about civil lawsuits. And what a civil lawsuit mean? It means that one person can sue another person for doing something wrong. And in this case, if police have immunity, it would mean that the family member um, cannot sue that police officer for doing for for killing this person. The only way that the police officer could would get in trouble then would be if it is the government, the the state government, local government, or even federal government decided to take action and say this is wrong. We are going to punish you in some way. But right now there is a qualified immunity 
from civil lawsuits that just means individual people are, are not able to um, sue uh, at the moment. So I, again, I hope that these articles will, can put uh, some things in context as to how this started, what's happening, why it's happening, and then the big question um, is like, where do we go from here? And I, one thing I want to say that, again, this is more just my um, opinion talking about this, is that I know right now a lot of the discussion is focusing on um, the black community and the police. But I still think Black Lives Matter is a much broader uh, topic, broader discussion. It's not just about the, the police. It's uh, about, it's part of it about the police, about the criminal justice system. It's about access to um, education and having more education equality. It's about having uh, safer neighborhoods. It's about having better health care. Uh, it's about having equal opportunity if you want to do something like take out a loan from a bank. There are so many different forms of discrimination that exist in the United States. And to be quite honest, um, I, I think it exists all, all over the world. I think if all of you were to reflect right now about uh, your country and what's going on there and think about what kind of discrimination exists in your country, whether it is against somebody of a different race, a different religion, uh, a different gender, I, I imagine that everybody can can kind of think uh, about something that goes on. So again, I, I, I don't, the, the big question is, uh, people think, oh, okay, what's the next step? And obviously I, I don't have the answers to that. Again, I think it's always good to just try to listen, to understand, and then I think reflecting is also important, which is what I said that I try to do is when this comes up, to think about uh, my own experiences and what I've seen happen, the types of discrimination, why this was happening, and hopefully if I'm able to reflect on it and understand, I, hopefully that, can, uh, that will make me a better person. And one thing, I, the last thing I wanted to say um, is one thing we want to do with some of these lessons, which we've decided to do from now on out. I don't know if you saw the lesson before when I talked about um, COVID-19 and some of the vocabulary from the virus. And then at the end, uh, I made a donation. We made a donation and highlighted a charity, an organization that was important to me because I worked with the, this orphanage. So one thing um, I, we want to do, and not, we're not going to do it uh, all the time, maybe once a month, we'll see, is that when we talk about some of these um, issues, whether it's talking about um, racism, whether it's talking about protecting the environment, um, it could be talking about inequality. It could be a variety of things. One thing we would like to do is try to use this channel, this platform for a little bit more of a positive change. And I want to highlight an organization that we think is doing good work. And uh, my wife and I, we've decided to make a donation to this charity and kind of and highlight it. So the one that we decided uh, this time, it's called Black Girls Code. And I will put a link in the description right down below. You can check it out. Um, I will throw a link in the description right now if uh, I can. And what we've done is we made a donation. And what this, um, what this organization does is it works in trying to um, train and, and educate young black girls and teaching them how to code how to write code and preparing them for the, the digital world because everything is digital nowadays. Um, so this, it, it is closely connected with education. Um, it started in the San Francisco Bay Area and we used to live there. Uh, I had heard about this organization before, but we wanted to highlight it. We made a donation. I suggest you check it out. If you want to make a donation, that's fantastic. If not, I, I would still, that's per, that's okay. I'd still encourage you to go check it out, read about it. You're reading in English. It's a good way to practice your language skills. And just, I think, reading about any type of organization that does some good in the world, I think that also helps us become better people in general. So check that out. Um, link is in the description. I threw it in the chat. 
I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little discussion. I hope you learn new words and phrases. And uh, again, I hope it helps if you decide that you want to read a little bit more about what's going on or if you uh, watch TV or listen to something, maybe you hear these words being talked about and uh, you'll be able to understand it a little easier. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you next time. So long.